Hi, I'm Travis from TMK Interactive, and today I'm going to show you how to film for a remote event. If you are new here and love creative and interactive technologies just like I do, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the fun. Together, we will walk through the steps to filming using either a DSLR camera or a cell phone. If you are here for a particular question, you can find the chapter markers and answers in the description below. First, let's start off by discussing cameras. In this video, we are going to cover the two most common types of cameras out there, a DSLR and a phone. Each of these have their own advantages and disadvantages, which we will explore. A DSLR camera is one that is primarily made for shooting photos. However, in recent years, there has been a shift and most now offer video recording of some sort. These cameras are great and provide an amazing image quality and shallow depth of field due to their large image sensors and interchangeable lenses. However, this quality comes at a cost, and usually these cameras are priced at or above $500. Some DSLRs also have a recording time limit that will require you to split your longer recordings into multiple smaller ones. Phones, on the other hand, are much more common to come by, and I have to say the cameras they're putting into these phones these days are simply mind-blowing how good they are. However, their small sensor and lens size cause some unwanted side effects. The image is sometimes overly digitally sharpened and it does not perform well in low light situations. But a phone's camera will be a hundred times better than any webcam any day. Now, let's talk about streaming versus pre-recording. In a pre-recorded show, we are able to record our video separately and then, edit, and then the editor will be able to combine them together in post-production. But if we need to film a scene with a group of people, we will need to hear each other. The easiest way to do this is to record on your camera device and use a laptop or tablet to hear each other using a software like Zoom. If we are streaming, we are going to need some way to get the signal from the camera into the laptop. Thankfully, there are devices that allow us to an HDMI connection from our camera and convert it to a USB signal. This will allow us to use any physical camera as a webcam connected to our computer. This comes in handy if we are needing to do, say, a Zoom conference. I will leave a link to the capture dongle that I use below in the description. Regardless, if we are doing streaming or pre-recording, the rest of the information provided in this video will be the same. First, let's consider where to put our camera. We want it to be in front of us, and we want to align the frame so that it follows the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a framing technique that divides your picture into three parts. And in general, you want to keep your focal point of the image, generally your eyes or face, in alignment with the top one third of the guide. We will also want to make sure that we're close to the camera and that the camera is eye level. When it comes to cameras, there are three main settings that we need to consider. That is ISO, aperture, and frame rate. The higher the frame rate, the smoother the image will look. Likewise, the lower the frame rate, the more stuttery the image will look. Aperture is kind of like our own eye's iris, and when it's dark out, it opens to let in more light, in bright, and in bright environments, it closes to block light. In a camera, however, the wider the aperture, the shallower depth the field, which will give the background a nice blurry effect. Lastly, we have ISO. This is the digital brightness gain of the camera. In general, the higher that we set the ISO, the more noisy the image will be, so it's best to keep this number as low as possible. Let's jump into the demo. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into how to dial in the settings on our DSLR camera. So what I've done here is I've already powered on my camera into video mode, and I've made sure that it is set to manual the first thing that we're going to want to do is set the frame rate. So this is how often the camera is going to take a photo, essentially, to form the video. So the way to do that is if you're on a Canon camera, in the upper right hand corner there's a Q button. If we press on that, we'll get some more options. And on the left hand side right here, we have the ability to change the movie recording size. So if we press that, then if we look along the bottom here, we have the different frame rates. So, um, in general, 29.97 is a very standard frame rate, so we're going to stick with that. Oops, I'm going to pull that up again. But
But if you wanted a more cinematic look, something like you would see in a movie theater, you could choose 24 frames a second. Or if you're going for more of a soap opera, super smooth look, you would go for the uh, 60 frames per second. But I'm going to stick with 29. One thing that goes hand in hand with frame rate is the shutter speed. So in general, we want to keep this number at double what we set our frame rate to. So if we look along the bottom, that's what this one here is that currently says 125. If we press on that, we get various options. So if we go ahead and increase this, our image is going to get darker. And this is because the shutter is not open for as long. Whereas if we decrease it, it's going to get brighter. So like I said, we want this number to be double. So since we are filming at basically 30 frames a second, we're going to want to set it at 60. And I'm just going to hit back to get out of here. Next, we want to adjust our, um, our aperture. So I'm going to click on that here. So there's a couple of different options on this lens. You'll notice, once again, if we increase this number, the image get darker because this the iris is sort of constricting in on itself. But it, in general, when we're filming uh, these sorts of things, we want the, the iris to be as wide as possible to get that nice blurry background. So I'm going to set it the lowest number possible. And last but not least, we have the ISO. So the ISO is the digital brightness. And we can change that here. So if we increase this number, it's going to get brighter and brighter. But it's also going to get very, very noisy. We can't see it on the viewfinder, but if we were to be in a dark environment and film it, we'd see all the noise. So we essentially want the lowest number possible um, with it, the image being the brightness that we like. So for me, 100 looks good. And with that, we have configured our DSLR. All I would have to do is press the record button and we'd be good to record. Okay, now let's explore how we would do this on a phone. So I have downloaded an app called Filmic Pro and this is by far my favorite app for filming on a phone since it allows us to dial in more things than we'd be able to do with the stock camera app. So once you have the app open, well, the first thing we're going to want to do is configure the frame rate. And to do that, we're going to hit the little settings gear in the bottom right hand corner to bring up the menu. And then we're going to click on frame rate. And this is where we'll be able to change the frame rate. So if we wanted to change it to something, we could hit the arrows. And I'm going to put it on 30 frames per second, which is a uh, just a very good uh, frame rate all around. If you wanted it more cinematic, once again, you could put on 24 or, or smooth like a soap opera. That'd be 60 frames a second. And once you're done, you can tap anywhere to get out of the menu. So the next thing we want to do is set our exposure, because right now the image is looking a little washed out. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to click in the bottom left hand corner on the little dot with the sort of semicircles around it. And that will bring up our exposure menu. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that our frame, sorry, not our frame rate, our uh, shutter speed is double what we set our frame rate to. So we set our frame rate to 30 frames a second, which means that we want 1 over 60, because that's double of 30. And then I'm going to tap on where it says 1 over 60 to lock that in. And the next thing we want to do is adjust the exposure, or the ISO, which is the digital gain. And we can do that by dragging on this sort of scroll wheel. And I'm going to drag this all the way down. I think that looks good. And when we have what we like, we can just tap out of it. And now that will lock the uh, settings into the camera and it won't change. And then we can hit record and start recording. Congratulations, you now know the steps to make filming for your next remote event even more successful. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.